All right, today we thought uh, one of the best ways to help you guys review coming back from spring break is just to fill out this quick graphic organizer and look at kind of all the ways that we have uh, been solving quadratics. And so we hope that as you watch this and you fill this out, you're also kind of remembering some of those big ideas. There's four solving techniques that we have, and each page has a different solving technique on it. The first one we're going to look at is solving by factoring and using what we call the zero product property. Now, this could only be used uh, under certain kind of conditions, and so that's what this column is talking about. What does the problem have to look at before we start? So first, the problem must be factored easily. Uh, and so if you look at it and you're not 100% sure how to factor it or it doesn't look like it could be factored easily or it's not factorable at all, uh, then solving by factoring is, is not a great way of doing it. We're going to have to switch to something like completing the square or quadratic formula. Uh, also, if we're factoring and it's a trinomial, it's easiest if that first number is a 1x squared or just a plain x squared. You certainly can factor it if a is not equal to 1, uh, but it's much easier maybe to do it some other ways if it's not. Uh, so we just say we want a plain x squared. And then the quadratic must be set equal to 0 before we start. And so we're going to look at two examples. We're going to put um, examples over here so you guys have some examples. Maybe we'll do three of them. Um, but we're going to start with, uh, all these are going to say solve. So the directions are going to say solve. And we're going to start with x squared plus 10x plus 16 equals 0. Now the reason why factoring can uh, kind of mess with students a little bit is um, there's lots of types of factoring. There's greatest common factor factoring, factor x. Uh, there's difference of squares and it factor by grouping. There's lots of different factor methods. So you have to be able to recognize which type. I'm hoping by now when you guys see a trinomial like this x squared plus 10x plus 16 and you see that there's three parts to it, an a, b, and c, that we know that that's going to factor into something that looks like this. And to get the x squared, it's going to be an x and an x. And then to help us figure out what numbers are going to go to multiply to the 16 and add to the 10, we can use our factor x. So if we get problems that look like this, we're going to factor by saying what numbers multiply to 16 that add to 10. And you can use your factor sheets or you can look at different things. Uh, but numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 10 would be 2 and 8. 2 times 8 is 16 and 2 plus 8 is 10. We could also have the 8 here and the 2 here. Order doesn't matter. Because these are both positive, we know this is going to be an x plus 2 times an x plus 8. And so that becomes our factoring. And then the zero product property says this quantity here times this quantity here equals zero. Well, we know if there's two things multiplied together to give me zero, one of these quantities has to turn into zero. And so we can look here and say, well, what x value would turn this little section here into zero? What x value is going to cancel out a positive 2? And that's going to be a negative 2. And so we can kind of just do that opposite. Um, and the same thing for here. Maybe this isn't the, the number that turns into 0. Maybe it's this number here if I place an x value that turns into 0. And so again, what x value do we need that's going to cancel this plus 8 and turn it into a 0? And that's going to be a negative 8. And so we get x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 8. And those are our solutions, are our answers uh, to this problem here. If I took negative 2 and squared it, plus 10 times negative 2 and add to 16, I will get 0. And it'll also work if I put negative 8 in there. So both of those would work in that case. So this is called factoring a trinomial, or sometimes we call it factor x. And this method only really works if the quadratic is equal to 0 first. If it wasn't equal to 0, uh, we would have to do a little bit of work first. So if we had something like um, x squared plus 6x equals, let's say, uh, negative 8. This kind of looks the same as this one, but here where it equals 0, this one equals, oops, sorry, this one equals negative 8. And so you look at one of the restrictions, it says the quadratic must be set equal to 0 first. And so to get this equal to 0, we would simply move this minus 8 to the other side using our normal algebra rules to undo a subtract we add. So adding a, a 8 to this side uh, just gives me 0 now. And then I would also have to add an 8 to the other side. 
I can't add an 8 to an x squared. I can't add an 8 to a 6x. I can add an 8x to a 6x, but not that. So I'm left just kind of tacking it on the end here. And so what I would be left with after adding 8 to both sides is that x squared would come down, the 6x would come down, and then this plus 8 would come down, and now it's equal to 0. And now it looks more like uh, the same problem up here, where it's a trinomial, that a value is 1, the number in front of this x squared is 1. So we look to say, is this easily factorable? Can I find numbers that multiply to 8 that add to 6? Well, yeah, 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So my combinations, my factors, to get the x squared, I need an x multiplied by an x. And then I'm going to need a positive 4 and a positive 2. And so this and this are the exact same things. This is just what we call the factored form. But this form helps us get our answers, which are negative 4 and negative 2. Again, to get those answers, we're trying to turn either one of these sections into 0. And so the x value that would cancel out a positive 4 is a negative 4. The thing that cancels out a positive 2 is a negative 2. And so that would become our, our factoring part. So that's called factor x or factoring trinomials. Uh, there are also problems that are uh, GCF factoring. And so if we looked at an example of GCF, so maybe we'll make a note that this is a GCF problem so we can look at it later. Um, GCFs look a little different. They don't look the same. Um, so if I had 5x squared plus 25x equals 0, you'll notice that this doesn't look the same. There's not three parts anymore. It's not a trinomial. Here it says a's got to be 1 if it's a trinomial. Well, this is only a binomial. a is 5, so that restriction doesn't matter. Quadratic must be equal to 0. It is, so that's good. Um, but it has to be factored easily. So to be able to be factored, we have to think about how we could factor this. And it's factored differently than a trinomial. Uh, to get a, a binomial, we have probably some number out front and then the parentheses here. So we look and say, well, is there any number that we could divide out of 5 and 25? Is there a number that goes into both 5 and 25? And the answer is, of course there is. 5 does. Then we can also look, can we divide an x out of at least both of these? Since this has an x squared, which is an x times an x, and this one has an x, we can divide out at least one x from all of them. The easy rule to kind of remember is you can always look for the x's and take the the smallest amount and pull it out front. So if you have an x to the third and an x to the second, always pull out the x to the second because it's smaller. If I had an x to the eighth and an x to the seventh, pull out the x to the seventh out front because it's smaller. Here I had an x squared and an x, x was smaller so I pulled it out. Now our job is to figure out what we'd have to multiply this by to get back to this 5x squared plus 25x. So in my head I'm thinking 5x multiplied by what would give me 5x squared? So if you want to look at it like this, 5x times blank would give me 5x squared. Well, to get from a 5 to a 5, I could just multiply by 1. And to get an x to turn into an x squared, x times what is x squared? Well, that's just simply another x. x times x is x squared by definition. And so we would have to multiply a 5x times a 1x to get 5x squared. So back up here, when I'm trying to figure that out, 5x times x, or 1x, you could put a 1 there if you wanted, would give me the 5x squared. And then 5x times what gives me 25x? That's a positive 5. So that's my factored form. But that doesn't help me get my solutions yet. Well, I mean, it does help me get my solutions, but it doesn't tell me my solutions. I still need an x equals. And so I still have to think about what x's are going to turn these individual parts here into 0. So 5 times what? Because 5x means 5 multiplied. So 5 times what equals 0? Well, 5 times 0 would equal 0. So one of my answers is 0. And then in this one where it says x plus 5, well, what cancels out a plus 5 if I want to turn this into 0 would be a negative 5. So my other answer is x equals negative 5. And then those would be my two solutions. Uh, so there's a few things to think about when you're solving quadratics by factoring. Uh, the first thing is make sure it's equal to zero first. If it's not equal to zero like this one wasn't, then just move the stuff from the right side over by just doing your opposites, your inverse operations. 
Once it's equal to zero, is it easily factorable? If it's a trinomial, try to factor X it. If it's a binomial or it shares a common factor, if they all share something in common, then try to factor out the GCF. And once you factor it out, then use your ZPP, this ability to say what's going to make these turn into zero, and then you should be good. Hopefully that helps a little bit. You can watch this video as many times as needed. Thanks a lot for watching. Ask if you have any questions.